This is Ken Hellebang, Agricultural Engineer with the NDSU Extension Service. And we're going to be doing a series of five short uh, video clips related to flooded house cleanup. The first one is going to be on protection from hazards as you're going in and, and doing the cleanup. It's important that we be aware of what we're going to face and take appropriate protection to, so that we don't get hurt as we're doing that cleanup. It's important as we start into this process that we're aware that there are going to be companies that, that come in to help you uh, do the cleanup. And it's critical that if you are going to utilize some of their services that you make sure that those contractors have the local licensing, bonding, insurance, training, and certifications that are required to do the work for you. Most of these companies are certainly legitimate companies that come in, but it is important to make sure that you verify with them that they have the appropriate credentials to be doing the work for you. As you get in and are making decisions about the, the cleanup, it's important to uh, uh, seek help. Uh, this is a task that we've never faced before, and it's important that, that we learn how to do it correctly and that if there are questions that we're seeking out help, uh, not only help for the actual you know, nuts and bolts part of doing the cleanup, but also uh, there's a lot of financial and emotional aspects related to the, the flood cleanup. So it's important that we don't be making hasty decisions and, and that we work our way through the process. Really, we need to be thinking of this as, as a marathon that's gonna take us some time to get that home uh, recovered for us. If we don't uh, do the cleanup immediately, it's important that we uh, take steps to try to minimize the amount of damage that will continue to occur in the home. Uh, one of the major issues that, that we're gonna be facing is mold growth, that with the moist conditions in the home, in the building, uh, that warm, damp air is going to cause mold to, to grow extensively, it is, as is shown on this right slide. And as we look here, you can see that there uh, is mold that is occurring not only uh, on the lower level where there might have been moisture, but throughout the structure. So it's critical that we try to, to do an, a drying out of the structure as quickly as we can. Also, uh, when things are still damp, maybe we want to be looking at some major cleaning of some of the mold and muck that will come in as part of that uh, flood event and, and try to move some of that away from the structure uh, as much as we can while it is still wet. But do that initial assessment and determine really what it is that we're going to be uh, tackling first and how we're going to proceed through the cleanup process. There's a lot of hazards associated with, with doing a, a cleanup in a home that has been flooded, uh, and I've listed a number of them here. Uh, there's structural issues. We need to make sure that the uh, floor is still uh, sound, that, that it's not going to uh, cave in underneath us as we come into the home. Uh, we need to be concerned about electricity, making sure the electricity is shut off so that we don't get electrical shocks or electrical electrocution. Uh, there's also going to be some issues with related to telephone and cable. Uh, they're both carrying electricity as well and, and we need to be aware of that uh, concern. Mold is a major health hazard uh, in the home and we'll be focusing on that quite a bit. There's biological contamination. Uh, we'll have water that will be contaminated with with sewage in many cases and we need to be making sure that we're protecting ourselves so that we don't uh, end up with health problems because as we're working in that flooded home. We have uh, lead dust uh, as a hazard. Uh, lead was used in paint extensively uh, before about 1975 and so it's important that if we're doing removal of, of painted surfaces that uh, were painted before that, that we keep the surface wet and that we're not creating a dust that will create a, a lead hazard. Same thing is true with asbestos. If uh, we have 
a boiler or some ductwork that is insulated that has a, asbestos in it, tiles. Uh, again, be aware of that hazard. Make sure that we're using personal protective equipment and keeping that material wet. Uh, carbon dioxide will be an issue and we'll touch on that. And of course, just the normal cuts and punctures associated with working in these flooded homes. When we're dealing with flood water, uh, they categorize flood water in, in different categories depending on what was in the water. A category one is, is clean water such as might come from a broken water pipe or rainwater. Gray water or category two contains some contamination in microorganisms such as might come from a, a dishwasher, sump pump, uh, toilets with urine. Category three is water that contains pathogenic agents, and that is uh, sewage, surface water, flooding. Uh, there might be pesticides in that. We really don't know what's in that water, and that's really what we're looking at when we're doing a, a flood cleanup is a category three flood event. And so we need to be using caution uh, because of what might have been in that water. There are certainly health effects due to exposure to mold. Uh, and I'm just going to read this right off of the slide. Scientific evidence links mold and other factors related to damp conditions in buildings to asthma symptoms in those with the chronic disorder. It doesn't cause asthma, but if you have asthma, it's a trigger for asthma attacks. So those that have asthma or other respiratory problems really need to be very careful about working around flooded homes because of the mold exposure. Uh, mold can cause coughing, wheezing, and upper respiratory symptoms in otherwise healthy individuals. Uh, it can create, cause hypersensitivity pneumonitis in susceptible people, not something we'll typically see. This would be with uh, people who are uh, whose immunity is reduced for some major reason and then lower respiratory illness in children and so there are very uh, documented health effects due to working in, in a moldy environment. The World Health Organization has also uh, looked at a number of studies and determined that the evidence is available in different countries uh, that show that occupants of damp or moldy buildings are at re increased risk of respiratory problems. Uh, there's also clinical evidence that exposure to mold and other dampness related uh, microbial agents increase the risk of various conditions uh, such as sinus irritation, uh, sinusitis, and then also uh, evidence that supports that uh, there's diverse inflammatory reactions, uh, things that can lead to infections. Uh, so it's critical that we take uh, care as we're working in these mold infested environments to protect ourselves and to make sure that we are doing the cleanup properly so that we don't have future mold growth in our homes. One of the main things that we're going to do to provide protection for us is to wear uh, a respirator or mask. And the minimum that you should look for is on the mask, it should say an N95 rating or a, a HEPA filter or a P or N100, indicating that it's going to be filtering out mold spores. Uh, we need to make sure that it has a proper fit uh, and realize that there is going to be some labored breathing associated with uh, breathing through that mask. And to help us uh, overcome some of that labored breathing, there are some masks that have a valve in it that allow you to exhale uh, through the valve, and then as you inhale, it comes through the mask and is filtered. And I really strongly encourage you to be using respiratory protection whenever you're doing any of the flood cleanup. It's also important to, uh, to use goggles to protect your eyes. Uh, you're going to be working in a very dirty environment, so some type of, of coveralls are a good idea. Uh, rubber gloves, uh, so you have protection for 
your feet, your hands, uh, your whole body is protected as you're working in these homes. And then whenever we have a flood event, it seems like uh, there's a, an, a tendency for people to look for, for easy solutions, quick solutions to some of these problems that we'll uh, be finding in our homes. And it's important to realize that there's very limited benefit from air cleaners. Filters remove only some of the spores, uh, do not uh, remove the volatile organic compounds, and so will, are only marginally beneficial. Uh, units that produce ozone, uh, many times it's referred to uh, as a, a kind of cleaning the air like rain, those units are not effective against mold. And now there are hydroxyl units that are somewhat similar again. These may be effective, but not in the environment that we'll typically be working in in our homes. Uh, and so be very, very cautious about using any of these. Uh, we really need to focus on thorough cleaning of that home. So this has been that first segment uh, of the flood cleanup uh, presentation, and we'll be looking now at the process or steps that we go through and in the next segments.